bury the hatchet to supersize your business. Sharon Hornells from here with a pretend it's white flag to discuss today's relationship related idiom. And it is a called, it's, it's a relationship, it's relationship well-being for the month of June. We're talking about relationship related idioms and how they relate to our business. And today's is to bury the hatchet. To bury the hatchet, I definitely have said this to my sisters, to people at work, to my ex-husband, to other relationships that I've had. I've said, hey, let's bury the hatchet, meaning let's get along. Let's end our quarrel, end our disagreements. Sometimes let's just agree to disagree. But uh, it means to, it's, it's actually from the 17th century. It was first recorded in English, so it's centuries old. And it was the, comes from the practice of literally burying a hatchet. Uh, Native Americans, tribes, chiefs would get together when the two warring tribes or warring groups uh, decided that they were going to lay down their weapons and end their conflict or stop warring and live peacefully together. They would literally have a ceremony where they buried the hatchet. I was going to bring a hatchet in today, but I'm watching my granddaughters, and so I thought that was a bad idea, and I didn't want to run out to the wood pile this morning to get it. But you know, hatchets don't really belong in the house. They belong by the wood pile. So I guess sometimes I am politically correct, even though I'm usually not so politically correct. So what is this idiom? What is this expression to end a quarrel, to decide to get along? What does it mean to building and supersizing and growing our business? You know, there's, there's lots of different conflict resolution processes. There's, there's lots of, of ways to actually demonstrate that we're going to get along and work together and collaborate. There's, there's five conflict resolution strategies Remember, there's avoiding, not dealing with the conflict at all. There's competing. Hey, this is just going to get our juices flowing and we're going to be even more competitive than we were in the past. There's accommodating, taking into account that, that we don't get along with certain parties in our industry or in industries that are, are completing or uh, impacting our business. Uh, there's collaboration, which is really my favorite. I love to collaborate with other businesses and find common ground and ways we can serve people better instead of competing. And then of course there's compromise. Sometimes in conflicts we choose to compromise. Uh, negotiations, a lot of times negotiations with, uh, I've been involved in lots of labor negotiations over my corporate career, we end up compromising. We, we search to find a win-win solution, but sometimes you just gotta give in and compromise on things that you think you really want. Uh, <clears throat> what are some ways to resolve conflicts or deal with enemies. I like to I like to talk about enemies because most people don't talk about it, but all of us have conflict and enemies in sometimes what we're growing and building and supersizing our business. So the steps I like to follow for that are know your enemy, watch what you say and do, because nowadays everything you say and do can be held against you. And it didn't used to be <clears throat> that way, usually you'd have to say something in writing or do something that people videotape. But when I was growing up in corporate America, we didn't really have videotaping equipment. And remember, we didn't really even have, we were just starting computer technology back then. Uh, we want to find common ground. That would be my step three for that. And then we want to um, warm up and prepare ourselves for when we're going to have conflict, knowing that conflict is inevitable. Whenever two humans come together, some way or another, there's going to be friction and conflict. Why? Because we come with all of our own personal experiences and baggage and thoughts and beliefs and feelings and mindsets about business. And whenever we're interacting with other human beings, sometimes we don't all agree 100%, which is absolutely awesome because we need diverse thoughts and beliefs and ways of doing things if we want to grow and build and supersize our business. Uh, <clears throat> is that enough on conflict resolution? I could go through another whole process. Uh, there's tons of processes on how to con how, to, how to deal with and how to handle conflict effectively. But once you get through that conflict, I am curious, how do you in your organization, when you're interacting with other organizations, how do you represent, maybe visually, like bury, literally burying a hatchet? What is a ritual or something that you do in your organization to demonstrate that? Uh, if I've had a conflict with somebody and we've resolved it, usually I'll send some kind of a gift or a note or a reminder. I, I was having this conversation with my sister yesterday. Her son graduated from college and and was doing thank you notes. And uh, 
there was a conflict that came up with his grandma saying, hey, you don't need to send me a thank you note. I don't need a thank you note. And he took that to mean nobody needs thank you notes. Well, I reminded her that what she really wants to reinforce into him is that, yeah, kids don't send thank you notes nowadays because of a lot of reasons. But that's how you stand out and you give yourself a competitive advantage in life is by doing the things that other people don't do, especially things that are nice, like sending thank you notes. When you have a conflict and you resolve it, it doesn't take but a few minutes to send some kind of an acknowledgement or a note or thank you, I'm so glad we resolved this, along with something that would be meaningful to them. Maybe it's a little gift or a trinket or a token, whatever works for you or is appropriate for your business and for you as a person to, I like to symbolize when we have closure on things, especially things that have been a little bit negative, right? And we've turned them to a positive. So love to know how you do that in your business. Share in the comments below. And I will be with you tomorrow with another relationship well-being, I like to say, related idiom. To bury the hatchet, I think, is a, a thing that symbolizes and represents well-being and improving our relationships. All right, have an awesome day. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow.